Minimum, minimum. V1. Bank angle, bank angle. Good day everybody and welcome to another video tutorial about the Aerosoft CRJ for Microsoft Flight Simulator. In this video we will taxi out and depart towards Munich. And without any further ado, let's get started. We just got our taxi clearance from ATC and we can now arm the nose wheel steering. We put the taxi light on. Check the right side, check the left side, all clear. All right, release the parking brake. And gently increase thrust to about 30%. You see the aircraft is already moving. We will now do a brake check. Yeah, the brakes are working. And we can now make our right turn towards the taxiway. About 30% and one is enough to taxi. We are now still at the uh, apron and taxi speeds of around 10 to 15 knots is fully okay here. Okay. Paderborn is also the airport where the headquarters of Aerosoft is located. And in a little bit we will be able to see the Aerosoft building. It is of course modeled in this scenery. Somebody walking there, probably admiring the CRJ. This here is the Aerosoft building. You can see the logo here. Once again, here it is with the logo. Okay, we make a right turn here. We continue on taxiway Delta and we are going to the holding position on V06. We're picking up a speed, going downhill. A touch on the brakes will do. And another turn to the left. It's lovely weather to go out flying today. Okay, let's check our EFB. We can do the taxi checklist. Lights and strobes. We will do the strobes when we enter the active runway and the lights will be on if we get a clearance. Fuel cast flow, manual, we already did that. Flight attendant, advised. Transponder t cast on and set, we will also do that during the lineup. Radar terrain set, unfortunately this is not modeled yet. And CAS, let's have a look. Yep, yeah, the cool alerting system, all is well. And we even see a takeoff config OK here. Before we line up, I will park the aircraft at the holding position and we will just do a quick review of what is about 
to be happening. Okay. We park it here. We set the parking brake. Parking brake on. Okay. We just do a check of our uh, flight instruments and now I see that we are still in green needles. This is the convention, conventional navigation. We want to fly with the FMS, so we go to the nav source switch here and put it in white needles, the FMS source. We do the same thing for the FO and now it also has the white needles. At the moment we only see the VOR1 needle displayed here, it's for Warburg. We can always select the uh, ADF2 and this will show the Paderborn NDB now. We don't need it, but hey, it does not cost anything. Okay, a few words about the departure. We are cleared 5000 feet and it is the Warburg 1XA departure. We will accelerate at 1,700 feet. That is exactly 1,000 feet above aerodrome elevation. At this altitude, we will select climb thrust and we will accelerate to 250 knots. Shortly after departure, I expect a clearance to flight level 180, which we filed for today. And as soon as we are accelerating towards 250 knots, we can clean up and retract the flaps. Normal retraction speed would be for flaps 8, V2 plus 12, and for flaps 1, VFTO minus 15 knots. As you will notice, everything will go really fast after the departure. I will not comment too much in the first one or two minutes, and if you have any questions, just ask them in the forum or read the manual volume 3 tutorial flight. All right, and with this set, we can now start the lineup. We have the clearance. We check that the departure sector is clear. We can now switch on the strobe lights. We want to switch on the transponder. That's right here. Okay. And we will have to increase thrust again because it's going uphill here. even more than 30% okay now I see movement my multifunction display I will decrease the range a bit like this so I have a better overview of the routing we will take the left taxiway here so we have the most amount of runway available Another thing, if you see any frame rate problems or stutters in this video, it's because of YouTube and the recording software. I'm flying this right now and I do not see any stutters whatsoever. Okay, one last thing to do. We have to tell the FMS that we are on the runway. We can do it in two ways. We can press this toga button here, or we have a click spot here. Whichever you like, you can use. We will use the TOGA button now and see what happens on the primary flight display. The flight directors can now be seen and you are in takeoff, takeoff mode. Okay, we just received our clearance, so we can switch on the landing lights. This is a signal for every other aircraft. If you see an aircraft on the runway with its landing lights on, you know he has his takeoff clearance and he is about to move, so you'd rather get out of the way. We start the timer and it's off. Take off. In the primary flight display you can see Toga. This is a hint, you can also deselect it. Okay, runway track 055, it checks out. We have speed increase on all PFDs, 80 knots. V1 and rotate. Positive climb, gear up. 
and we need a pitch of about 20 degrees. We can also sync the flight director with this one, and you see it will now sync to our last position. Okay, speed mode please, nav mode, and at 600 feet, autopilot on. We go to climb thrust and we can now increase our speed to 250 knots. Like this. Retracting the flaps. And we are clear to fly level 180. Flaps are up, now we can disarm the thrust reversers and we can also switch off the taxi light, we don't need it anymore. And always center this heading bug, it's very important. You will fail your check flight if you do not center it like 100 times as a minimum. Well, as you can see, lovely weather here. Okay, we passed our transition altitude and we can now go to a standard Baro ref setting on all three altimeters, like this. A climb rate of almost 4000 feet, very sporty today. And again, don't forget to center that heading back. We will increase the range a bit, like this, we are now inbound Baburg. At flight level 100, we may increase our speed to 290 knots, 290 knots. And we will also do this in speed mode. At the moment you can see the active lateral mode is FMS1. We are climbing in speed mode and we have altitude select for flight level 180. It's a bit bumpy here. And there is flight level 100. We can now increase the speed to 290 knots. Like this. Okay, flight level 100 in Europe. We can put the landing lights off and we can now start our after takeoff flow. Quite short. The manual button will go back to auto. We will shut off the APU. Oh, we've got an ice message, as you can see. We are almost in the clouds, but hey, if it says ice, we'll just put on the cowl anti-ice, and in this case, well, why not the wing anti-ice also? And now you can see we have ice in green, all is well. Well, my flow got interrupted now. Uh, where were we? Ah, yeah, we switched off the APU. Now we can go to the radio page and put the radios back in auto. So we have the auto tune function again. If you look outside, you can see some build ups ahead of us. Nothing bad, but I do not want to switch off the seatbelt signs quite now because. Um, if everybody's standing up and we are flying through these clouds, it will be a bit bumpy, and that's not what you want. The ice message is already gone, meaning we can deselect wing and call in the ice. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now turning sandwiches. And seeing that fly level 180 will take us right through these clouds, I'm requesting fly level 240 with ATC. We are in luck today. They approve flight level 240, so we change the altitude in the flight control panel, the FCP. Flight level 240. I hope that will be enough to get above the clouds today. And don't forget, update that heading bug. The 
The outside air temperature is uh, minus 20 degrees. Total air temperature minus 2. Mostly there could be some icing in this upper part of the clouds here. So just as a precaution, I will already switch on the cowl in the ice. If I have time to spare, I could tell the flight attendants, hey, it will be a bit bumpy for the next one or two minutes. But at the moment, we're too busy talking. So we just passed Warburg now and we are officially on the Upper Lima 126 to Dinku. And you can see our flight time is uh, 34 minutes remaining. It's a fairly short flight to Munich. Okay, seems like we're almost on top here. We had no ice message, which is good, and because we are above the clouds now, we can switch off the cowl into the ice once again. The last 1000 feet should be flown with a maximum of 1500 feet per minute climb rate. So we have 2000 feet remaining, I select vertical speed and 1,500 feet. We just changed our mode from speed to vertical speed. The thing is now, as long as we are in climb thrust, in the climb detent, our speed will increase. So we have to go out of the detent and reduce thrust a little bit. Feet. I will now reduce the climb rate to 1000 a minute. And as you see, the pilots like this, we will just take this cloud with us. A little less fast, the speed is 300 knots already. You could fly around it, left or right, with the wind coming from the left. A high turn would make sense in heading mode, but it's not a big deal, so. We'll just go right through it. But once again, cowl and the ice on. Altitude select capture. We almost are at flight level 240. Alright, this is looking very good. I like it. made our level off and now we have to reduce the speed even more, but our cruising speed is 300 knots or Mach 0.74. In our case we have Mach 0.79, so 300 knots will be our cruising speed for now. We are above the clouds, we can switch off the cowl and the ice again. And now we can also release the passengers by putting the seatbelt signs in off. So now it's time for the checklist. CAS, crew alerting system. Let's have a look. All good, only the no smoking sign. We can box that again by pressing on the status key, like this. And altimeters, they are standard, 1713 on all three altimeters. Okay, this concludes our take off video towards Munich and in the next video we will prepare our arrival into Munich and fly the star anti-ionics. I hope you have enjoyed this video so far. Thank you so much and see you the next time. Bye bye.